Okay, you're wrong. All right, this trip, we're at uh, Cheetahs in uh, Hollywood for the Kendall Carson birthday party, and we're here with Will Ryder. I, I, I'm having a good time. I, you know, I get to look at some, uh, some t almost some titties and almost some ass. Oh, by the way, can I say swear words in it? Oh, you can cuss as much as you fucking want. Okay, good. I don't like to cuss like a sailor, but once in a while a word comes out, you know? Well, in this industry, you kind of got to sometimes. Well, you know, if I was a real gentleman, I would use more eloquent words. But, you know, sometimes I get down to that mentality and I, and I throw a few F-bombs in there, you know, just for the fun of it. But then you got to use a dictionary, so that, that takes the fun out of it. Yeah, it, it does. But I'm having a good time. This is, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go home in a few minutes and go to sleep, but I'm having a good time now. All right. So what have you been working on lately? Well, I got some, uh, uh, some big movies coming out. I, I have a parody of South Park coming out in a, in a few weeks, actually, yeah. And it's really, really fucking funny. Nice. And it's actually a musical, if you can believe it. Oh, no way. Kind of like the South Park musical. It's very funny. Got music and everything? Yeah. All, all self-written music? For it's the all original compositions, okay. and uh, it's goofy. You know, the songs the songs like, uh, she's a gangbang whore. All these things. It's, it's very <laughs> funny. It's, I got to see that. Yeah, people can go on YouTube and, and put in South Park. Uh, I, I actually did see the promo. And it's pretty, yeah, pretty yeah, goofy. Nice. And then I have a big movie coming out uh, a little bit after that, uh, a spoof of The Wizard of Oz. Yes, yes. You guys have been working hard on that one. That one is the biggest uh, project that we've had in quite some time, and uh, that is a musical also. I, I, I got I got music on the brain for some reason, you know? Can, so it's all original music for that as well? Yeah, that's some, where South Park is a, a kind of goofy, fun music, right, this right. is some serious, big-time music. Wow. Wow. Any any known people writing the music? Or? Yes. Uh, well, I wrote... I wrote the majority of the music, and I'm known. People in my house know me. No, <laughs> there is. I didn't know you wrote music. I, I I was in the music business all, all my life before I got into porn. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And then I, my buddy uh, Rock Hardson, uh, he, not his real name, he uh, <laughs> he co-produces the music with me, and um, he's a big, huge, big-time songwriter in the in the pop world. Nice, nice. And I can't I can't talk about him, you know. We won't we won't say that. Yes, <laughs> it's Rock Hardson though. <laughs> but that's not his real name, so don't Google that right now. <laughs> no, you could Google it though. He actually has an IMDb page. Oh, no All shit. The stuff he's done with me at Born. It's very funny. We get a we get a big kick out of that, you know. Oh, die. Yeah. yeah. So when is the release of Wizard coming out? It's going to be uh, in the, in late spring of this year, and um, we have so much work still to go on it because, you know, we shot seven sex scenes, three thousand words of dialogue, five musical numbers, and dancing. Three thousand words. Three thousand words and a tornado. Oh, no fucking way. A real tornado. Oh, nice. Yes. You conjured one up? Yeah, actually, it's not a real tornado, but it's, you know, it's a Hollywood tornado, but it looks like a real tornado. Yeah. Is Jeff Goldblum in this? No, but there's not. But I, but, but I always say there's nothing like a, a, a bad weather event in, in pussy. That, that's what turns everybody on. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking rain and pussy go together, but the tornado and pussy, I'm not sure about. Well, you know, we're going to find out real soon, so, you know, maybe I miscalculated. But well, both of them are a hole. They both have a hole. So yeah, and, 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 the, and the truth of the matter is really that The Wizard of Oz is probably the movie that has guaranteed me a reservation in hell. So, you know. I, well, yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can just see myself getting up there one day and all of a sudden like, okay, you did not the Brady's, Triple X, that's okay. You did not the Cosby's. Wait, what is this? Wizard of Oz, what? You did Wizard of Oz? With the Brady's, they say, we hit the Brady's too, so who, who gives a fuck? You know? well, can you please step in this other line over here, sir? You know? But you know, the, the, all the gays love Judy Garland, so maybe they'll come out for the Wizard of Oz too. You know what? I, I could have made a, a, a two movies at once. I could have made the gay version, and that been. You could have. You could have. And, and and you know, there's a lot of. I've had actually a lot of thought to that over the years. I've never done it, but I always thought it would make sense because we have the sets built. We have it all. Just cast a parallel cast and go and do a gay version of a movie. You know. You know, there's a lot of Judy Garland impersonators that are gay. Yes. Oh yeah, most of them are gay. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of them. That would that would be a perfect fit. Yes, there's none in here, are there? Well, I no. If I if I hear somewhere over the rainbow, I'm gonna have to run. <laughs> you know? Now, do you object to making a gay porn? No, not at all. You have no problem. I, well, the truth of the matter is, I probably wouldn't do it or shoot it myself because the truth of the matter is, the gay market, and I don't know anything about the gay market, but it's very specific as far as I can't. I can't. Uh, it's not in your wheelhouse. I can't sit here and say I know exactly what they want to see. I, that'd be that'd be ridiculous for me to say. 
So um, um, I would have to entrust somebody that knows the market better because you know that's that's a good business point to make. Right. We as guys, we know what's hot to us, you know. So we we cut the scenes that way. Yeah. Yeah. Sense. I know what's hot in a porn movie. Uh, five songs in a tornado. <laughs> Anything else we should be looking for from you? Well, you know, just just a whole slew of uh, new movies coming up in the next uh, X amount of uh, uh, months. We're getting ready to shoot the Love Boat Triple X uh, with Adam and Eve. And uh, who's Julie? Uh, well, Sunny Lane, actually. No fucking way. We love Sunny. We're gonna bring uh, Sunny Lane back out of her uh, self-imposed exile, and uh, she's gonna she's gonna get it on on the Love Boat. We just talked to her Davy, and she's looking as hot as ever. Yeah, she's a, she's a great girl. She's a good friend of ours, and. Uh, yeah. She's a horny little thing, and and, uh, and and I always love having her in the movies. And she's got that reddish hair, too. She could do Julie perfect. She's going to do a great job because she's bubbly, and that's what we need. Yes. We need a bubbly girl, yes. and, and, and there's nobody as bubbly as Sunny. I've never seen her down or depressed, no, ever. No, I she's, never have either. She's just a, she's just a sweetheart of a girl, and she's like a, like a almost like a family member. Yeah. She's almost like a family member that you fuck. <laughs> Well, I don't know her that well. <laughs> well, you know, there's always time. Yeah. That's true. That's true. The night is young. Yeah, the night is young. It's only good. Oh, that's awesome, though. The love boat. That'd be a good one. Anything else? Well, you know, I, I have so many ideas in my mind that I want to do, and, and, and we'll announce them as they go along. You know, I'm not really sure where we're going to go, but, you know, we're in, a, we're in a very crucial part of the history of porn because... With the glut of free porn, it's very, very difficult to survive economically anymore. And you have to make really smart decisions. If you make some bad decisions, it pretty much puts you out of the game. And never before has it been this uh, this uh, dire. So I think people, you know, that were used to the way porn was in the in the past, are going to be sadly uh, 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 looking at the future of porn because it's not going to be what it once was. It's not going to be do going in doing a scene and just releasing it. You know, you're going to have to have some creativity to it. Well, I, I think there's going to be a point in the very near future that even the most creative people are not going to be making movies because it's just the economics are going to be so so poor as it's not going to be worth it. What do you think the future for porn is going to be then? Well, I think the, uh, the future is, is, is bright for individual girls that cultivate their fan base, that cultivate webcamming, uh, that can survive by having an interaction, uh, a personal touch with their fans. I think for companies like myself and the big companies like Hustler and Vivid and all these companies, I think the future is very bleak. You know? So what do you what do you think is going to take to change that? More creativity, something in a different venue that nobody else can do? No, I, I don't think it comes down to that. I think I think the porn industry over the last five or six years has been as creative as it has ever been. Um, it has been better than it's ever been, in my opinion, with the, with the quality of work, the, 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 the level of production. I just think that if you offer something for free, it's hard to compete. If somebody's yeah. giving free gasoline at the station and you have to go fill your car up, are you going to go where it's four dollars and forty cents a gallon? Or are you going to go where you fill up for free? You know, I'd go where it's free. It, you yeah. can't compete with that. It, it's a very difficult situation, and I don't think the fans, and it's not their responsibility to know. Every, you know, people go on free porn sites because they want to jerk off, but it has had such a negative impact, and I don't see any way out of it. I don't know. I hope there's somebody that's more creative than either one of us can figure it out. Well, there's always somebody more creative and, and, and smarter than I am. I never never said I was the smartest the smartest guy. I'm not a dummy by any stretch of the imagination. Oh. But I think that uh, uh, where where it was where the boat was missed was the government not enforcing copyright infringement. And uh, there was no way that the federal government was going to enforce copyright infringement when for 30 years they've been trying to get rid of the uh, X-rated business through, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, charges, including obscenity charges, and all of a sudden now, oh, you want us to uh, 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 shut him down for a copyright infringement because he's putting you out of business? Oh, he's putting you out of business? Oh, that's a shame. Good, good luck with that. And he's offshore and he's not in our country? Oh, who cares? But 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 offshore doesn't really have anything to do with it. Right. Because you could shut down an IP address from getting into your country. Our, our websites aren't available in China. Right, right. So it was a matter of the government stepping up to the plate. And, do, and, and, and the only thing I could say that I think the federal government has done wrong, besides everything, is the fact <laughs> that they have not protected the kids from this massive easy one-click access to hardcore pornography if I was a parent I would have a heart attack trying to police my kids from watching porn because any eight-year-old can go online and see the most graphic porn so I blame the federal government for not imposing some kind of sanctions some kind of restrictions but they turn the blind eye and they turn their back which is the easy thing for the government to do 
They, they're usually good at being lazy and uh, bumbling. Well, they're very good at prosecuting people for doing porn. Exactly. Uh, for, for an adult to do porn to consulting, consenting adults, like the Max Hardcore situation. Love them or hate them, the fact that they put this man in prison, to me, is ridiculous in this day and age when porn is watching the privacy of your own home. So, listen, the federal government does a lot of great things for this country, uh, like the military, but there's a lot of things they don't do, and I think that a lot of our representatives, congressmen or senators, uh, need to look at intellectual property rights a little bit stronger, some of the federal judges also, and states judges, because I think they have not grasped the concept very well. No, I think at the congressional level they just don't get it. They and don't the, understand. And, 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 the, and, the, and the DMCA laws and all these are so outdated. You know, they're 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 decades old basically, really in, in theory. And we got burned. And you know, once it starts hitting Hollywood, the movie business, uh, it's really going to be bad. It wiped out the music business. Yep. Uh, it's coming after movies now. Well, luckily for movies, I still think that the bulk of the income is still made on at, at, at live gate, and right. people still like a communal experience to go to the movies with a bunch of people. Right. Nobody likes to go to a porn movie theater and jerk off while there's a guy, you know, four rows down. <laughs> no, no. So that's unless you're Pee Wee Herman. Right. So, well, there you go. So we don't have that option anymore. So I think that, you know, it's like it's like the great producer. You know, uh, 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 Weintraub said, every 10 years or so, somebody comes along and resets the table. Yeah. And we're going through a drastic reset right now. And where we come out, we don't know yet. There's somebody that's going to come along and they're going to figure it out and they're going to be the next billionaire entrepreneur. And the opportunity is there for all of us to become that entrepreneur. But boy, I tell you, it takes a, a really keen mind to figure out how to mo monetize this. It's going to be another Einstein's going to come along and maybe boost the industry back up. Well, there will be a person who is an Einstein or a Steve Jobs or somebody that exactly. is able to do something. Um, but you know, the guys that put it, that ripped off all the stuff and put it up for free are making plenty of money selling advertising. So maybe porn is just in the in the television model of the late 1930s, the early 1940s, where the, the great palaces, the great theater owners said. What do you mean you're going to give shows away for free? What about our ushers and our popcorn makers and our and our valet parkers? You can't put them out of business. So maybe we're just in a big transition like that, and and uh, you know maybe we'll come out in a in a different. Capacity. Well, technology usually runs about 10 to 20 years before anything that we can do in a in a society can fix it. You know, technology is way the hell out there. And by the time we come up with laws that govern everything, and we we come up with systems of regulations and stuff, we're 20 years behind. So it's gonna, you know, it's gonna keep evolving this way, and it's gonna get faster and faster. Well, it used to be a lot of times that the the the, the viewing habits of people that like to watch adult movies led a technological explosion with the VCR and with the DVD. Uh, sadly, uh, the adult industry is no longer ahead of that curve. We're, we're followers now, and um, we'll see where it goes. You know, I'm not complaining. I had a really great run so far. Um, you know, with the parodies. You know, and and. I still get to shoot movies, and, and we'll see how long it goes, but I don't think it's going to go much longer. Well, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I hope you. I hope somebody I, proves you wrong. I do, too, because how am I going to pick up young 19-year-old girls? <laughs> you come here. <laughs> I don't think they'll pick me up. If, you got to make it rain. You know, they, they, they want some ballers, so if, if I'm not successful, they're not going to even want me here at these strip joints. So. That's true. Well, hopefully you invested some of your money and stuck it away. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I'm okay. I, I have no problems, but what I'm saying is that you like to continue, and, yeah. and if you're an aggressive worker, like in, you know, I'm sure you are and I am, we like to work. We like to create. Exactly. We like to move. You know, I don't like we to like to create things. We like to create, we like to work, and we like to um, um, push the limits of what we can do and, and, and see where it goes. So we'll see. But um, I still love these beautiful women, and it's a great business, but you know, it's just not quite as great as it once was. All right. Well, before I let you go, you got to say happy birthday to Kendall Carson for us. I will say uh, happy birthday. You know, Kendall's going to be in my next uh, parody movie, uh, The Love Boat Triple X, and uh, I think she's great. She's fabulous. I'm glad that I was able to. Uh, come to Kendall's birthday, and uh, I just say happy birthday to Kendall Carson. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you.